experiment day 19, investigating how pH changes when a weak acid reacts with a strong base and when a strong acid reacts with a weak base. Make use of pH meters like this one. Now, the pH meter here has a digital reading, um, so it's quite precise. It goes to two decimal places, but it's not necessarily accurate. There's often an offset with these things. So the first step for this practical is to calibrate the pH meter. So when we do calibration, what that involves is taking some known measurements carefully and recording what the readout says on here, then producing a calibration curve so that the readout on here can then be converted to a true value. I'll just take this pH meter then and give it a little rinse off with some distilled water like so. And what I will then do is pop it into the first of three different buffer solutions. So a buffer solution has a well-known pH, um, they're being, being made up carefully. This first one here is at pH 4, so I know that the pH is 4. And this meter, so it's important to just let it settle for a few moments. So it drifts a little bit, let it settle down. So the meter reading has now settled at 4.23. So if I just take that out of there and just record that, so the buffer pH 4.00, pH meter reading 4.23. Now I need to do that uh, on a number of different places on the scale so that we can uh, cover a good range of pHs. So I'll take this meter reading again, this time the buffer pH is 7.00. So again, just give it a little bit of time, let it settle down, it's drifted around slightly, and it seems to be settling now at 6.71. So buffer pH value 7.00, meter pH value 6.71. Last one then, give that a little rinse off and pop this into the buffer which is pH 10, pH 10.00. Again, let's just let that settle. And that value has settled at, still changing, 9.57, so true value 10.00, meter reading 9.57. So the first thing I now need to do is go away and make a calibration curve so that I can process the results from the rest of the experiment. So I'll go and do that just now. So the calibration curve looks like this. It's come out as a nice straight line of this bit, which is quite handy. So what I will need to do for the practical is make the meter readings using the same pH meter and then use this calibration curve eventually to convert those values into true pH values. So the first of the experiments that the uh, core practical needs is for us to investigate the change in pH when we add sodium hydroxide, so that's in the burette here, to some ethanoic acid um, which is down here. So I'm going to put PET 25.0 centimetres cubed of ethanoic acid into a nice wide neck and short conical flask. Now the reason I've chosen that one is so that we can easily fit the pH meter in there and have it underneath the burette and allow it to swirl and things like that. And so that the depth of the solution is a bit higher than a normal 250 centimetres cubed conical flask. So I'm using a slightly different conical flask to normal. This is probably a good time to remind you about good practice with pipettes. So the first thing to notice is with a pipette we always use a safety filler and hold the glass nice and close to the safety filler like so. If your hand's further down, what you end up doing is trying to bend the glass and so if it smashes it goes into your hand, um, which is quite a common and quite a nasty glassware injury. So holding that nice and close to the filler, I pop the filler on like so. Um, then I'm going to rinse the pipette with the solution um, of the ethanoic acid, that's the one that the pipette will be used to deliver eventually. So popping the pipette into that solution, drawing up some solution through this pipette, and then just lifting that out, flip it onto its side, carefully avoiding getting any solution into the filler. I'm just going to take the filler off the pipette, like so, and replace it just with my finger or my thumb. I just use this to just swirl around the inside, just making sure that all of that pipette nicely coated but that the solution does not get up as high as the filler because that just contaminates everything and every experiment forevermore. So I'll just drain that into the sink, that's absolutely fine, um, and give that a few moments to just drain out. 
So now that has been rinsed with the solution um, which it's going to be used to deliver. So if I just allow that into the sink. Now this time and this time only, I'm going to give that a shake, like so, just so that we've rinsed it thoroughly. Next, filler goes back onto the pipette like that. Now I'm going to draw the solution into the pipette, nice and slowly and carefully. And what I'm aiming for is for that solution to land about halfway between the graduation mark, which is here, and the pipette filler at the top, going really slowly when it narrows out like so, and stop about there. Replace the filler with my thumb, like so, that out of the way. and then I'm going to just bend my knees so that my eye is at the same level as the graduation mark and just gently, gently, gently letting that solution drop down until the bottom of the meniscus just sits on the graduation mark, nearly there, sort of there, and let that drain under gravity, importantly, into this small conical flask. Now, once this is drained under gravity, into the small conical flask. Because of the calibration of the pipettes, the last thing that I must do is just touch the surface of the solution with the pipette. So at any moment now, this should be fully drained out. There we go, it'll drain a lot quicker on this narrower part. Draining down like so. And the last drop, just touch the surface like so. And what you see is there's a little drop of solution still in here and it's calibrated to, to know that that is there. So that's correct. That's the correct delivery for that solution. Now I'm going to pop this pipette down and I'm going to put it down something like that with something at this side of it so that it's nice and safe and it's not going to roll off the table. All right. According to my recording, the first recording I need to make is with 0, 0.00 centimeters cubed of the sodium hydroxide added. In other words, record the pH of the original solution. So if I sit that pH meter into there, again, I need to just let it settle down. So it's dropping down here. Let that value settle. Still dropping down. Still dropping down. And that seems to be settling out now. Lovely. At 3.17. So the pH meter reading with no sodium hydroxide added, 3.17. Okay, on this burette, I've now got some sodium hydroxide and I'm going to move that burette down a little bit so that I can get my eye to the right level to record the first volume on there. That solution sitting at 1.00 centimetres cubed. So the method asks me to add this in two centimetre cubed portions. So I'll just lift that back up and in this case, I need to just very carefully get the jet of that sitting something like that so I don't miss it. I'll keep that pH meter in my hand like so. I'm just going to add solution carefully and dropwise like this until the bottom of the meniscus reaching 3.00 in here, which corresponds to 2 centimeters cubed added like that. Give that a little swirl around. Keep swirling it around so that it's nicely mixed. And then let that sit down there. Again, keep an eye on this pH meter reading. And that's now increased to 3.97. 3.97. I'm going to continue to do that. So the next portion I will add and so on and so forth. So now that I've taken all of the data from the adding sodium hydroxide solution to ethanoic acid solution, I've filled it in on the table and once I've finished the practical work, I can then use this calibration graph to just transfer those back to true data, true pH data, um, and then can start to analyse that data appropriately. The second um, aspect of it, so part three of the practical, is to investigate the effect of adding hydrochloric acid, which I've got in this burette, to some ammonia solution, which I've got in the beaker down here. So again, I'm going to just use the same method. I've already rinsed this pipette with the ammonia, so we're good to go. So safety fillers on, I'm filling it, just slightly overfilling it so I can get my thumb in place without losing too much of that solution. Going about halfway between the graduation mark and the filler, and then switch over to my thumb. I at the correct level so that 
I can see the bottom of the meniscus just approaching that line, like so, and into the chemical blouse. So drain that under gravity as I did the last time, and then be ready to touch the surface of that with the pipette. Uh, here's the pH meter. I've already given that a little rinse off with the distilled water since the last um, practical that I did. So let's just let this drain through, like so. Touch the surface. Swap that over. Put that somewhere safely. And then just allow that pH meter to just settle down. So whilst that's settling down, let me check the burette reading. So I'm on 3.00 centimetres cube this time. Um, so I'm going to be adding that in portions of two centimetres cube again. And the pH meter has now settled at 10.71 in the first reading. So with no um, HCL added, 10.71 is the pH meter reading. Move this up slightly so I can get the flask underneath it. Again, holding it carefully so that we've got everything in the right place. Um, and I just need to watch for this level until it gets to 5.00. So nice and carefully, nice and slowly, so I don't overshoot it. I'm looking for the bottom of the meniscus to hit 5.00, just like that. So that's two centimeters cubed delivered. Give that a little swirl, like so, just mix it thoroughly, pop the pH meter in there. Make sure that's completely thoroughly mixed. Let the reading settle down. And that's now at 9.39, so I will call that down. And again, I will just continue to add those portions until a total of 20.00 centimetres cubed of HCL has been added from the burette into the flask. 